Hello and welcome to part 2 of the Web Titan tutorial video series. In this video I'm going to, through, going to go through configuring authentication. Uh, authentication is what allows Web Titan to uniquely identify your users. To begin, you should be able to access your web interface on the IP address you configured on your Web Titan server. When you get to the login page, simply enter admin and hi admin, that's H-I-A-D-M-I-N as the username and password. If you haven't already done so, you will need to load a license. Simply click on System Setup Licensing. Click on Select License File to Import. That will open a default a standard file open window. Browse to and select your license file. When that is done, simply click Import. You'll be able to view the license details below once the license loads. We would also recommend that you upgrade your server to the latest version. If you click on Updates, Click on the Start button beside Check for Updates Now. If there are any new updates available for your server, they will be downloaded and made available to install down here. You may need to refresh the page for them to appear. Once they do, simply click the Install button. The install procedure will begin. Once you're up to date, click on System Setup and Authentication. Click Enable and this will give us a drop-down list of the available authentication types. The most simple form of authentication is IP-based auth authentication. You simply create users, assign IP addresses or an IP range to users, any HTTP requests that originate from those IP addresses will be authenticated as the assigned user. Obviously, this authentication type is only recommended for use in an environment where you're using static IP addressing. The most commonly used and easiest to manage version of authentication will be NTLM. To configure this, enter your NT domain name, your primary controller, primary domain controller name, your primary domain controller IP address. If you have a backup, enter its details and a username and password that WebTitan will use to connect to your Active Directory server and authenticate users. Using the administrator account is perfect for testing, but for long-term use we would recommend creating a separate WebTitan account. That way you won't have to come in and change the password if the, the administrator password changes. Next, you can select the number of NTLM authenticator processes that your system will, will use. Uh, this would be determined by the number of users you have. Uh, if you have too few authenticators, the symptom you would see is your users will get NTLM authentication pop-ups in their browsers when they attempt to, attempt to use the internet. Uh, simply come back to system setup authentication and increase the value here. Note, saving a change to the authentication settings will cause the proxy service to restart and your users may need to close and reopen their browsers uh, in order to continue. Also, uh, enabling IP sessions will greatly reduce the number of authentication processes you, that are required. Uh, with IP sessions enabled, the first HTTP request received from an IP address will be authenticated using NTLM. If that's successful, WebTitan would record the IP address and username uh, and a countdown timer is started. Uh, the duration of that timer is determined by the IP sessions time to live value. All subsequent HTTP requests from the IP address will be automatically authenticated as the recorded user and they would also reset that IP sessions timer. When the timer reaches zero due to inactivity or no requests coming from the IP address, the IP session is closed and then the next HTTP request to originate from the IP address would once again be authenticated using NTLM and a new IP session is started. If you have any terminal servers on your network, or any machine where requests from multiple users would originate, you will need to add them to this list so that they're exempt from IP sessions. The alternative methods of authentication are NTLM with no IP based authentication, uh, LDAP or IP and LDAP. Using LDAP based authentication, the major difference will be that your users will be prompted to enter a username and password when they open their browser. The number of times that your users are required to log in can be reduced by using IP sessions. 
uh, as long as there's an IP session open for that user's IP address, they will be automatically authenticated. So there'll be no need to enter the username and password again. So if you are using LDAP-based authentication, it can be quite useful to use a, a long IP session timer. This will reduce the, the number of times that they need to enter their username and password on a daily basis. The servers used for LDAP-based authentication are configured on the Users and Group Users tab. Simply click Add, enter your LDAP server details, and click Save. Uh, these, th these servers are also used for importing the users and groups, so we'll go through this in more detail in Part 3, where we go through the, the process of importing users and groups. Thanks for taking the time to view this video. Please continue on to Part 3.